Hey everybody, this is Marcella Ernie and we are here with Rich. Hello everybody, uh, Rich Ramirez uh, utilizing uh, Ernie and his experience for some coaching today, trying to work some through some uh, problems I've been having on the track. Yeah, so you've done how many? Like 30 track days? About at 30 track days. At Thunder Hill? Thunder Hill, East, West. I've done uh, Sonoma and uh, it's about Okay, and so you're getting ready for a novice season with AFM, I hear. Yes, I am. Yeah, I'm very excited about it. And just a quick peek, guys, while we're here. This is Rich's bike hiding back there. He's got a 2014 BMW S1000. Is that correct? Correct. RR. Yeah, S1000 RR, that's right. Yep. And um, how long have you been riding for? Uh, riding since I was about 16 on the street. Uh, I decided to try the track last year because I kind of like to go go a little fast and the street's not the place to do it. I've had a lot of close calls, almost hit turkeys, bicyclists, cars. I don't have any, any luck left, so I decided to go on the track where actually it's safer. So these 30 track days, what you, how many years has that been spanned over? One year. Okay, so you're going hardcore first 100%. year. 100%, I, I don't run the street anymore and uh, uh, I found something I really love. I wish I could wish I started a long time ago. So you're definitely a motorsport enthusiast. You definitely got the, the blood in you, uh, per se, because you're going pretty damn quick for your first year. Thanks. I mean, it's not easy for me to just cruise around. I mean, i got to be set up, too, to do what you're doing, you know? And just cruising around in the, just above two minutes in that zone is uh, pretty damn fast. That's all I can think about. So I just want to get better. And the thing I love about this sport is that there's always improvement, uh, room for improvement, and you're never going to master it. So in the rider training today, we've been going over a lot of things. Just to name a few, we went over your bike to make sure it's set up and right. safe and geometry and set up. We, we touched on your suspension a little bit. Right, well, we, fixed, we, we, uh, we improved that a little bit. In my yeah, we added yeah. some damping to the rear and we discovered you had no preload on the front. Right. And so how do those improvements, just those three little improvements do for you? Very, very, uh, very significant. Uh, a lot easier to ride the bike. Another thing that you told me that really helped out is look ahead, look ahead into your turns. Quit fixating on where you don't want to run off the track and where you're braking. Look look ahead and keep your head down and uh, the bike will follow. Yeah, absolutely. I mean, I say that a lot for sure and I repeat it for a reason. I mean, I even have to remind myself, Rich, all the time. I'm like, oh, look through the corner. I start to fixate on the curbings. I start to fixate right. just around the corner. But as I was teaching you, at the entrance of the corner, we want to be looking at the exit. Of course. While braking towards the entrance even, right? Right, right. So it's logical. It's just something that just doesn't happen naturally, I think. So I, I also buzzed on like, hey, we're connecting bigger dots, not so many small dots between the big dots, Correct. right? Correct. And that smooths out your line and helps you get around. So what corner uh, specifically did you were you able to look way ahead because of it's not so much elevation and the, really helps you? The corner, it really helped me with corners are turn eight but specifically turn ten turn ten is a is a heartbreaking turn let me jump on the map here while you're going at it it's a heartbreaking turn turn ten everybody so nine ten that's right hard breaks this is where I hit the tire wall correct <laughs> so we all know that one from the video probably so in turn ten you're able to see all the way up to turn eleven essentially correct and by not fixating on right here, by looking over here, everybody, now your brake zone became much bigger, you got way more track, and you don't kind of panic. Less panic. I was just gonna say that you took the words out of my mouth. So it's, uh, it's a lot more easier. I mean, uh, it's a lot safer, to be honest with you, than I've been riding. Yeah, so we've been trying to reduce your lean angle with improving your body position. Correct. What was the big change in your mind right now in terms of your body setup? Uh, I love the body setup. I feel great. Marcel, you taught me to drop my head down. I had my shoulders, I had my ass, I had my leg, everything was everything was pretty good, but my head was cocked up. I was kind of crossed up. Uh, for some reason, it's not natural to want to put your, your face down to uh, asphalt at 100 miles an hour. Essentially, below the mirror or to the mirror level, right, it's, and right forward. The, exactly, exactly, and it helped out a lot. I mean, especially turn coming out of turn six. Coming out of turn six, dropping my head down, made me have more control. For everybody, so here, let's get a clean map here. Turn six, right here, guys. So after 5A, you drop down the mountain. I've had some big crashes off of that hill there. You might remember, like, a just spiral. Anyways, turn six, you're setting up for a fast seven. Then you want to be full throttle from after six through seven, let off a little bit into turn eight and full throttle. Turn eight is an exit corner. Turn seven is a fast entrance and exit corner, essentially. So keep going what you're talking about for your turn six, bud. Yeah, turn six was outstanding. So you go ahead and turn into turn six. You want to hug that curbing on the inside. But uh, I was dropping everything down. I was able to feel much more comfortable as, my, as I dropped my head down towards the curbing and towards my elbow. 
Yeah, and what about turn nine? What do you think about the top of the hill? Oh, turn nine. I, turn nine is a problem not only for me but for many people. They might not even they might not want to admit it. But the thing of it is with turn nine is that it's a blind turn. You can't see where the track's going, so you need to know what's going on or use your reference points. Above and beyond that, turn nine is going to shove you off to the left hand side. You need to shove. You need to hang off the bike to the right immediately after turn 9 or at the top of turn 9 to get yourself pointed correctly down to turn 10. The funny thing is, is that turn 10 is a left-hander. So you're coming down turn 9, coming through turn 10, you've got to go from the right, from, from, the, from the left side, or the right side of the, of, the, of the bike, to the left side as you're braking hard to set yourself up yeah, to turn yeah. 10. Yeah, so essentially your body is on the left here, guys. You're on the left, you're set up on the left, you stay on the left, you stay on the left, you go through 9. And you, uh, Rich, initially, you were then keeping your body on the left right through here and kind of pushing your bike in more lean angle and trying to... So you weren't able to get on the throttle down there because you just weren't set up correctly. So I told you to get your butt to the right, then you're on the right, you carry the throttle, then set up to the left, and certainly before turn 10. You know, so yeah, so you're able to get your body set up more correctly in all the corners. Um, Correctly, and one of the demons I've had that you really helped me with, and I'm going to continue to work on what you told me, is turn 14. Coming out of, down this straightaway at full throttle, there's the bridge right here, at full throttle, a lot of people wait until they're down here to shift their body over. Mm -hmm. Okay, that's a huge problem. It puts a, it puts a lot of stress yeah. on your chassis. Late body setup. Right, correct. Marcel's telling me, as soon as I can, Get my ass over to the right hand side, and then I can down, you know, let off the throttle, downshift, downshift, and then start braking, all the while with my with my body off to the right. Then when I come into turn 14, I just have to drop my upper body. That's right. And and it's just it's it's much easier than boom, boom, it's already over to the right, and then just leaning on in. Very fluid, very smooth, very safe. And I was able to to feel more confident and comfortable and even get more corner speed out of 14 than I've ever been able to get. Exactly, exactly. And then you're setting up for your exit corner on 15 and we rip down the track again. Mm -hmm. By the way, guys, thanks to Carters at the Track for having us out here. Uh, nice event. A lot of people. Track days are getting real popular these days. Yeah, very and crowded out here, but uh, there's a lot of good competition. A lot of... Uh, a lot of fast riders, a lot of people that uh, you can strive to be as fast as, but safety's the key. So uh, rider training, I believe, is really imperative. Yeah, I mean, you know, you can see all the other guys out there. Some guys aren't preparing for any of the corners, and they move yeah. they move their butt right in the corner. And so once they pick up their speed and pace, they upset their chassis and they're down. We saw a lot of bikes down That's out there. That's why there's bikes all over the, the landscape out there. And there was <laughs> a couple of helicopter rides out today. Oh, shit, that's, there was more than one, I didn't realize. Yeah. Two guys, I believe, in, in turn two. Yeah, so guys... It's worth the investment, definitely get training, you know, just tuning my own horn here, but um, what about uh, managing your air pressures and managing your tire temps? Let's take well, a look at today here. It's amazing because the way you broke it down, Marcel, we can tell how, it was, how I was riding and how my exit drives are, whether it was on the left or the right side, if I was going harder hard enough or not hard enough just by the temperatures that we were getting as soon as we were coming in. So guys, let's look at the very end of the day. This is the temperature with my probe on warmers. And so you're getting, you know, you're getting consistent 110 say, and then off the track, notice his front now, the temperature of the day was getting warmer. His front is nice 98 all across. And then we notice, hey, the left side of the tire or the right side of the tire is hotter or colder. And um, so it gives you an idea of like, hey, why are we accelerating on the left-hand turns very quickly or the right? So we noted that you are getting slow out of turn two on the left Correct. and slow out of turn one because you were not heating the left side of your rear tire. Especially on this track, it's primarily, uh, it's, the majority of the turns are left-handers. So my left hand should be, my left side should of my warmer. tire should be warmer than my right. So yeah, you're getting good right exits, but you're definitely slacking on the left. Which, so. is, which is strange, but that's it, it, the, the math doesn't, uh, the, the temperature doesn't lie. And you can see the changes we made, compression we went up, rebound we went up a bunch on the rear, on then the front, uh, we went down, and um, and then preload, etc. And you know, you can see and graph the temperatures throughout the day, um, the pressures we were monitoring, guys. So we're keeping track of everything, track temperature, shade in the shade, and as it grows, you know, you can see it's growing and growing. And we started the day with 64 and 53 in the shade. And our pressure started to rise with it. Correct. Correct. Just uh, 20 seconds here to summarize, you know, what do you think? Uh, you recommend this stuff? What do you say? 100%. I mean, there gets a point, if you, when you get serious about riding, there's a point when you're going to hit a plateau. You're going to hit many plateaus. And when you hit these plateaus, you think to yourself, listen, can I go faster? No, you can't. 
you need to ride safer and you need more technique. Perfect. Thanks for coming out, bud. Thank you very much. Cheers.